Hi guys, welcome back to our English story writing cycle of lessons and this is lesson six. We are going to begin today writing our own versions of the story Howl. So we've listened to the story Howl several times and we've now made a plan. You've got, you are writing your own version so you should have here the name of your main character. Okay, just imagine it's Sam. You've got where they are, okay? They're at their friend's house. And why? They've gone there for tea or to play. This is me making one up. If this was the one about Howl, we would have um, Jack, we would have Park, we'd have football. This is the story Howl. So Jack, Park, football. So you should have something like that for the first post-it note. Now, again, you probably won't have a post-it note, but in your book, you've got one and you've got that key information. So the setting, remember, it's almost impossible to have all of these things, all of these senses. So you should have at least three senses of wherever they are, okay? And then you should have some notes on the transformation. This is the model that I gave about turning into a butterfly. So are you shrink, is your character shrinking? Are they growing? Um, what happens to their body? Do they grow wings? Do they grow a tail? Um, do they grow fur? Do they grow scales, a shell, flippers? What happens? And then where do they see their reflection? So let's take a look then at the story. So this is what you are writing today. You're going to have your title. The title is going to be the noise that your animal makes. And if you can't think of that, ask me and I will let you know. So it could be flutter, it could be bark, it could be meow. This particular one is called howl. So let's look how it starts. Okay, your turn to get the ball cried, Peter. Okay, sorry, your turn to get the ball cried, Peter. Okay, don't go anywhere, replied Jack. This story starts with dialogue. And if you want to do that in your story, you can. So your character is someplace with a friend or a family member. You need to create a reason for them to leave. So I'm just going upstairs to the bathroom, said John. OK, hurry up, replied Ahmed. So imagine jo John is at Ahmed's house playing, right? So he's gone, he's left his friend. Maybe you're at school, your character is at school. So you're going to write the dialogue. Notice how it's set out. We've got exclamation marks for these two. We've got inverted commas and start a new line. Then you're going to write this paragraph, which is your description. Leaving his the pitch and his friends, Jack entered the trees. It was shady and damp amongst the greenery. Nearby a bird sang happily and somewhere close by a stream gurgled gently. Slowly he scanned his surroundings, but the ball was nowhere to be seen. So your character, if they've gone upstairs to the bathroom, you can describe the carpets, the curtains, the noise of um, somebody coming downstairs. Is there a smell of flowers there? If it's at school, maybe they leave to go to the bathroom. You describe the colour of the floor, the colour of the walls. Is the smell from the kitchen coming because it's near dinner time? Can you hear children playing sports outside? So they've left their friend. Now, in this case, he's gone to get a ball. So he says, where is it? Your character may not have got go, gone to get anything. Maybe they've gone to the bathroom, though. Like they could say, which door is it? It's to themselves. Then you've got a paragraph where they change into their creature. As Jack moved further into the small wood, so the trees, his friend's voice faded. Suddenly he felt a strange tingling sensation. His nose began to grow. His hands chained into paws and fur sprouted all over his body. In less than a minute, Jack was on his knees feeling very weird. Something peculiar had happened. So you've got the paragraph of him changing into the animal. So whatever your animal is, you are going to describe the change. Does, do they grow fur? Do they shrink or do they grow? Do they grow wings? What happens for a human to change into the animal that you've chosen? Then you have got the bit where they realise that they are that animal. Now, you could have this paragraph. 
Next, Jack tried to walk, but when he did, he used four legs instead of two, but he noticed his clothes were lying in a crumpled heap. Before he had time to think, his nose twitched. And then there's this bit all about the smells. A wolf can smell things a human can't. Now, if you've che if your character's changed into a butterfly or something, you might have to miss this. However, look, just then something caught his eye. Something caught her eye, if it's a girl. Now, because Jack's in some trees, he sees his reflection in a puddle. You need to think of something shiny and reflective for your character where they are. And then you've got this sentence, but it wasn't the image of an eight-year-old boy. How old is your character? Are they 11 or they're 12? But it wasn't the image of a 12-year-old girl. It was the reflection of a butterfly, or it was the reflection of a um, chimpanzee. So that is where we are writing up today. We are writing leaving the park, so you can come back here. You can pause this and use it as your model. Then we will be here and you can pause this as your model. But we're stopping at up to where the reflection is. Now, just a few things. We've got some nice fronted adverbials. Leaving the pitch and his friends nearby slowly. We've got subordinate clause here as Jack moved further into the small wood. Then we've got another fronted adverbial, fronted adverbial suddenly in less than a minute. Next, then. Okay, just then. We've got lots of nice adjectives. Okay, we have got things like a tingling sensation. Peculiar. We've got some great vocabulary like greenery. Um, and we've also got a bird sang happily. We've got adject um, adverbs as well. Looking at this, we've also got a bit of extra information in brackets and a dash to add on extra information. So there are lots of things that you can magpie from this story. So I'm going to leave it on this page here. Well, remember you're doing part one, two, and three. Leaving the friend, setting description, describing the animal change, the transformation. You've then got this part that you can pause and then this part. Stop at the reflection. Really looking forward to seeing what you write. And then we will be starting lesson seven tomorrow when we look at the action part of when your character realises that they are, um, they go out and then people see them or something exciting happens. So look forward to reading that. Until tomorrow, guys.